Hello everybody, I'm Jimmy Fantastic and this is my Rebel Playoff Season 10 Quarterfinals Previews and Predictions video. Um, there's been loads of games played, as you can see we're down on the last eight. We've got Archangel 7 versus Lazarus Diggs, Bleeding Hippie versus Ornan, High Lord Salt versus Jimmy Fantastic and Varkson versus Doc Mark. Three of the games have already been scheduled. So um, I'll say that, I'll, I'll go through each matchup, say where they're from, have a look at their record, have a look at their team, do my prediction and say when it's it's scheduled for. So I shall do all of that. And uh, it's just a bit of fun. Nobody take offence at, at anything that's said, okay? It's not serious. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so first up is Archangel's Will, coached by Archangel7. He's playing Lazarus... Um, Lagarus' like Nurgle team. This is the only game that isn't scheduled yet, funnily enough. Um, Archangel 7 actually won um, Rel Division 3 with this team. So, um, with an 8 4 1 record. And uh, yeah, he's got, he's got it's Wood Elves, it's 11 plays, it's 18 20 TV. He's got a strip tackler, um, which is alright, isn't it? A strength is. Is all right, but they're you know they're lightly skilled, aren't they? Very lightly skilled. A couple of block guard catches is good. Obviously, sidesteps really good on that one. Movement seven's a bit bad. Um, a rackle strip is pretty nice, isn't it? With dodge, lodger and wrestler. And then they've got this crazy catcher. Um, you know, edge five leap block, brilliant. Nerves of steel pass block, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> but you know he's there. He's he's a fun player, isn't he? Um, and yeah, the, there's a niggle there. There's a niggle there. The the dancers are bare bones. Obviously, they're still dancers, so they're still good players. Like this is <laughs> is a high elf catcher. This would be a pretty great high elf catcher. They'd both be great high elf catchers. But um, as dancers, they're somewhat lacking. Obviously, you only one only one skill and two skills. Um, grab and guard on the tree. Like it it's okay. It's an okay team, but it seems it seems very like vanilla, and I think it's lacking. The, the dancers are lacking. I think that's the problem. It obviously, doesn't have show hands. It you know the, this could be show hand sidestep or something on the catcher, and it it, be, it looks way better, doesn't it? Um, I'm not really a fan of the accurate either throw, but you know if you're gonna pass, it's it's good, isn't it? So um, yeah, and that's that's his team, and uh, overall he's thirty three ten nine, which is quite good, isn't it? Obviously, he's in the playoffs. Uh, you know, there's not going to be terrible teams or terrible coaches in the playoffs. Um, and 8 4 1's a very good record during the season. It's, and yeah, it's it's an elf team. It, it, it can win a game, can't it? Any, any game can be won by elves. And they're up against the Grody Greens, coached by Lazarus Diggs. They finished fourth in Division 1 of Rel with a 6 2 5 record. So they uh, they didn't have such a good season, but they're in the quarterfinals. They've got Nurgle team, 1700 TV, but only 11 players, so he's going to buy one or two more, I would imagine. Um, he has a great beast here, strength 6. Uh, block, guard, break, tackle, stand firm. Break, tackle was instrumental, actually, in one of the games. And, uh, yeah, obviously that's a, that's a great beast, exactly what you want, isn't it? Absolutely amazing beast. But it's 280 TV, which is a lot of TV. Um, I wouldn't like him so much in matchmaking, but obviously in a league like this, when you're going to be playing who you're playing, he is, he is a great asset. The, the Nurgle Warriors are absolute bare bones. I mean, these are. He's taken, he took some damage in his last match versus Orcs, and uh, that was a brutal match. Um, a Pestigore with Rackle Frenzy in two heads. That's, in, that's an interesting kind of safety player, isn't it? He's got a killer with tackle, which is obviously going to be very, very crucial. Really, it's it's all going to come down to if this killer can can work, isn't it? If the killer puts in a shift, it's going to be it's going to go well for him. But this is really lacking, isn't it? There's no ball carrier, so the strip ball becomes active. There's the edge four dancer. And this re team really doesn't have anything to stop Els. He can't afford a fourth warrior with his money. I guess he could as an inducement, as a mercenary, maybe. Yeah, I guess he could. But um, it looks bad, doesn't it? It looks really bad for him. I think this, uh, I think this is a really hard matchup for him. I think the Wood Elves are, are big, big favourites in this game. He just doesn't have, 
he just doesn't have the tools to stop them basically he's, he's got a couple of tacklers but everything else is bare bones and yeah he's gonna have to he's gonna have to have the game of his life i think 38 9 17 this looks really uphill i mean nurgle are a bit bad against what else anyway like, even though the meme is that they're a control team and everything with this disturbing presence they're slow you know at the end of the day they're a slow team and they, they get outmaneuvered and uh, they lack tackle as a rule and it's surprising he's got two tackle but he, he's lacking kill skills which is unusual for nurgle so yeah i think he's going to find himself really i think he might really struggle in this game but you know i don't know how good a coach anyone is really and well i know some of them but um you know who knows? I guess it, there's a lot of dice to be rolled in each, each match, but uh, I'm going to go for the woodies in this one. And the second semi-final is Bleeding Hippie with his chaff team, the very famous Snow White and the Six Chaffs. They've won Rebel before. Um, Hippie, funnily enough, has won the latest season of Champs Ladder. And um, yeah, th this match is actually versus on, and th this match is was scheduled, but there's been some uh, confusion over time zones so I'm not really sure when it's going to take place might be that it's going to be 1600 UTC Saturday but not sure on the on the timing of this one actually um, Hippie finished second in G-Man Division 1 with a record of 652 and uh, yeah his, his team is a monstrosity 2190 it's kind of 2170 isn't it but he's got a nice bank there with spanning expenses he's got two blodge break tackle bulls of course, as most people tend to get eventually, don't they? Any W go and dodge, of course. A Frenzy Juggernaut is actually pretty nice. I quite like that build, actually, that he's done there. And then there's Tackle, you know, probably going for Guard next. It does make him a little bit Guard light, the fact that he passed up Guard on this Bull Sentinel. Well, he might get it eventually, but um, probably go Mighty Blow, won't he? Only four Guard does make, does make Hippie a bit light on Guard. However, he's not light on Claw with four Claw players, which is obviously great. Two Claw Poms. Loads of Claw Mighty, Stand Firm, Dauntless Pro, a couple of dirty players, 13 players. You know, it's a, a nice ball carrier. It's it's pretty much got everything you want, this team. This is a very nice... He doesn't have dodge in the carrier, but it's a, it's a pretty great Chaos Dwarf team. It's got a couple of perms, but, you know, nothing too, too debilitating. And um, he is on 46, 12, 15. And yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? This this is this is the, probably the best team left in the competition. I would say, like best overall team, and Hippie's definitely one of the best coaches. So um, yeah, they could they could definitely probably probably my tip to win the whole thing actually. But let's have a look at Ornan's team who he's facing. And it's the New Year Norse, also quite a famous team, I think. Um, I remember these winning winning Rebel before. I'm pretty sure. And they finished third in in Rel Division One with a six four three record this season. Overall, a sixty four twenty two twenty three. That's a lot of games. This is an old old team. This isn't it. And uh, he's got a fantastic berserker. You know, palm tackle pro don't the same as same root hit he's gone down. He's got this kind of. Stat freak, not really, but a couple of strengths. He's actually got four guards, same as Hippie. Same strength as Hippie. No, more strength than Hippie, of course, because he's got Ulf Werners. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, more strength than Hippie. And he's got, like, a lot of inducements, plus he's got his own money. So, you know, he's probably going to dump his bank into this game because I, I believe he's re-rolling after this season, whatever happens. I really hate his thrower, but there you go. <laughs> that's just me, you know, that's just my style. I don't like throwers, especially not Norse throwers. Um, but you know he's throwing like he's got agility five, and that was actually crucial in his in his uh, round of sixteen match. He was uh, he hung he hung back like kind of did an elf stall, and it was it actually proved to be you know more or less game winning. So you know can't criticize it too much. But um, yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. And uh, yeah, you know there's it's just a bit weird, isn't it? His elf learners are very unskilled. These strengths are obviously probably the best thing a lineman can get: strength and guard. Need double for guard, but um, he's got he's got one. He's only got a dirty player, eleven players, you know. But he, he could be getting Cheney, a wizard, and uh, that could be really good, couldn't it? Maybe he maybe he'll get bomber. Um, he I know he likes the bomber a lot. Maybe he'll get a bomber. Uh, Boomer is Iason, isn't it? But yeah, it's it's it. You no, know, maybe he can do an upset. It's certainly he's he's proved himself as a coach, world champion, all that. Um, 
so you know, I'm sure he's going to battle every step of the way against Hippy. And you know, he, it may not be that much of an underdog actually when you take into the the equal guard and the strength. But obviously, it's whether Claw Palm completely ruins the game or not, isn't it? And uh, you know, the, the, obviously Claw wasted for Hippy. So if he's got a lot of wasted Claw, and he doesn't have that much guard, um, it'll, it'll honestly be pretty interesting. Not as not as clear cut as you would think with a 400 TV advantage. But obviously you have to give it to Hippy. You have to give the advantage to Hippy because he's got a 400 TV advantage. You know, obviously. Obviously that's how TV advantage works. It's an advantage. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be a lot interest a lot more interesting than you would think just based on TV alone. For sure, it's two, two great coaches with everything to play for. So uh, it could be a thriller. Could be, it could be it could be end up like five aside or whatever Onan's last match ended up as. <laughs> okay, and now it's now it's my semi final, which is actually scheduled for Friday tomorrow at uh, fifteen hundred UTC against this monstrosity of a team. Only nineteen thirty, so uh, so actually trim TV and um, High Lord Salt Nurgle's FTDs. Record is 36-28-24. I mean, it's Nurgle, though, so that isn't as isn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> he finished third uh, in Division Three of Rel, and his team is a killer. This is this is probably the scariest team in the playoffs. I think Hippies is arguably the best. Mine's also arguably arguably the best. But I think um, I think the best team is between mine and Hippies. I think this is definitely the killiest team. Um, or scariest fight, best fighty team. I mean, Hippie's got more killing power. I've got more strength. He's got the kill skills. He's got he's got three claw mighty blow, which are all paired with foul appearance and stand firm. So you know this can just you can get blocks loads more blocks against you if your blocks fail, and uh, and regen as well. You know it's it's amazing combination regen foul appearance and stand firm. These these three guys, these three warriors are amazing to be honest. And very, very scary. Beast of Nurgle's a beast. He's got mighty blow, fair enough. He's got a he's got a juggernaut tackle claw pommer, which is obviously scary, amazing, legend killer, absolutely fantastic. And he's got a crazy basically agility five ball carrier because he's got bludge, bludge two heads and agility four. So he's basically bludge agility five. So he's got a great he's got a great ball carrier, and he's got a great killer, and he's got these three monster Nurgle warriors. Uh, now he does at the moment only have eleven players. He doesn't have a dirty player, so you know it's it's not the best team at all by any means. But the damage output it's got is uh, is second to none. It really is very a huge banana skin. He absolutely demolished his round of sixteen upon. It was it was ridiculous, and you know he's got the potential to do it again, hasn't he? Um, he does have nine regen, which is obviously great in a fight, um, and he's going to have some inducements as well. And this is my glorious team, <laughs> or fantastic team, if you like. I'm repping G-Man 4, went 10-1-2 and won the division, which was nice, wasn't it? Overall, my record isn't isn't very good, to be honest, but then I have been prioritising player survival rather than winning games, which is something you kind of have to do in these kind of leagues, I think. It's something that everyone does, but uh, obviously Chaos at low TV, not so good at winning. And we've got two Claw Pommers, which is nice, isn't it? One with Tackle, on, on his way to Legend, quite close to Legend as well, actually. Um, four Guard, which isn't, you know, not as much as I'd like. These three players are waiting level up, so, you know, I could even go three Guard to give us a huge, you know, that could be huge for Bash matchups. Um, we could go Wrestle Tackle, there's options there. There's a <laughs> Sure Hands Movement 5, which isn't ideal, I might sack him. There's lots of things I can do with the team. Got a Dirty Player, Agi 2, not really an issue for him. Obviously, the big thing about the team is four strength up these men. Absolutely amazing. I was actually pretty unlucky uh, at the end of the season. I had a movement seven, blood, sure hands, beast man, which was with the carrier, and he died. So I was trying to desperately build one in the playoffs, and he got minus movement, which, you know, it's a shame because he was close to block sure hands. Obviously, if I play the Wood Elves at any stage, I'm going to need sure hands. So I really wanted to him to not get <laughs> not get killed, really. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the, these four, having four strength four is obviously amazing. Eight strength four on the team, it's it's outrageous. A lot of a lot of teams can't really can't really deal with it, you know. And uh, yeah, it's and plus there's the random killingness of claw pom, but not much apart from the two claw pommers. So like you know, there's, they're not that bashy. They've just got this huge strength thing, which 
it's interesting. I think match up quite well against the elves and stuff. But funnily enough, my I think my biggest weakness is the killy teams, which is what I've got this round. So um, <laughs> you know, if if High Lord Salt's dice are good, he's just going to wreck me. If my dice are bad, he's going to wreck me. Um, if we have equal dice, or if my claw pom goes on a tear, if his region doesn't work, then it could be it could be swinging the other way. Um, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, I, I think my, I think my team is just better at winning games than his. But if he if he if he flips the uh, kill switch, it's going to be it's going to be bad times for this team. So yeah, we you know never know how the dice are going to work. Uh, so yeah, that's that's an interesting one. I don't want to predict whether I'm going to win or lose. To be honest, but there you go. That's a that's the match. And the fourth quarter final is uh, between Vargsen and Doc Mark. This is the big O's last representative barroom blusterers and uh well <laughs> he uh he won division four with this team but i don't think it was really this team eight three two he went um overall he's gone twelve eight seven so it's like a season one or two team isn't it he hasn't got much left <laughs> he's got this catcher um this catcher's pretty good but only one dancer six journeymen um so that's that's a lot of journeymen isn't it He's not got much. He'll have a wizard or Jordel, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it would be a good team if he had more of it. <laughs> this is a great player. He's got a great lineman, you know. But yeah, it's lacking, isn't it? This is really lacking in skill ups. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be tough for him. Especially as he's up against this brutal, <laughs> brutal, rebel brutalia team. You know, dwarves, worst puzzle matchup for Woodies. He's going to be down a bunch of TV. What, about 300 TV is going to be down? Um, 12 players. An absolutely outstanding runner. Unbelievable vampire, vampire dwarf runner. Um, he went 9 3 1 this season with this dwarf team, which is obviously a great record winning so many with dwarves. Um, he's 25.75 overall, which is obviously a great record. Um, he's got block, block, uh, block, guard mighty blow on these two. He's also got diamond tackle, obviously he can be crucial against elves. He's got this strange little rackle stripper, which is a player I always want to make with my second runner, but I always end up chickening out and taking block in case they've got to carry the ball. Uh, strength up slayer, probably the worst player to get the strength up on, to be fair, but it's still good, isn't it? It's still better than not having it, really. And two Slayers is all right, I think, against Elves. A bit more speed. Um, normally, I only like one Troll Slayer, but I think that's absolutely fine against Elves. And he's only got one Blitzer, though, right? Yeah. But it's a nice Blitzer, especially. Stand firm against Elves. Blodge. Um, yeah, this is... It's obviously not the best Dwarf team ever, but I think it definitely matches up well against this this Wood Elf team, you know, to the point where I can hardly see a, a way for the Woodies to win. They're going to have to get a Wizard and have their Edge 5 catcher. You know, turn over and score. Basically, that's it, isn't it? It's going to be all down to the crucial wizard, I think. And obviously, if the if the rolls go well, Farkson can win. But I think the default, is, especially when you look at who Dark Mark's put out of the competition so far, um, you know, I think he's 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 run the gauntlet to get this far. And this is this is he's got way the better team this time. And uh, you know, I guess I guess he should definitely win. So I'll I'll pick Dark Mark to win this one. Right, so there you go. That's that's the quarterfinals. Um, I'll be casting them all live on Twitch, and I'll do replay analysis of them all on YouTube. So uh, check out either of those if you're interested, and I'll I'll be doing the same for the semis and the final as well, uh, whether I'm in them or not. <laughs> I think I'd like to do this every season, to be honest with Rebel. I don't know why I haven't thought about it before. I guess because I haven't made the playoffs before. But now that I'm in it, I thought also maybe the uh, CCL as well. I thought maybe I could do the same from the CCL. You know, just cover them from the quarterfinals on. Uh, could be a could be a nice way of doing it because otherwise there's a lot of games to cover. Um, so yeah, I think maybe just quarterfinals on in future. But there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.